job security doesn't exist. It's an illusion. <laughs> Straight up. And when I realized that, it was A, very frightening because it meant that I always have to be on my toes. But it was also very freeing because it meant no matter what I do, there's always going to be a level of risk involved. And I don't know if this is just because I'm crazy, but it made my tolerance for risk just that much higher. So it gave me the confidence to chase something that's maybe a little bit more risky, but had the potential to have a higher reward. Alright, so why do I think job security is a myth? And more importantly, who am I and why should you listen to me? And to answer the second point, I'm only the most woke, most handsome person on YouTube. You can look that shit on Wikipedia. Now getting back on topic, why do I think job security is completely fictitious? The job market's constantly changing with evolving technology, with evolving trends, with cycles in the economy, etc, 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 etc. So businesses as a whole are constantly restructuring or in the worst case, even closing down with all of these factors playing into it. It's very naive to think that the job you have right now is going to be the same one you have 10 years from now. Businesses are constantly adapting to these changing markets and because of that, their needs are also changing. So even if the job you have right now is considered essential to the business, there's no telling if it'll be the same way in 10 years. Back in 2017, I did an internship at an aerospace company as a business developer. I created apps to help them analyze their supply chain and last I heard from people who still work there, the department I used to work at doesn't even exist anymore. They completely got rid of it. And that was only three years ago. Anyways, I did some math because I'm a genius. I found a stat from the US Bureau of Labor that said that the average person holds 11.8 jobs between the ages of 18 and 48, so a span of 30 years. If you do the calculation, that means they're changing jobs every two to three years, which isn't a very long time. And I thought, okay, maybe they're just getting bored of the job. So I looked up that too, too, and I found that between August 2019 and August 2020, so the past year or so, month by month consistently, the reason people claimed unemployment was due to permanent job loss. So in other words, people were just fired. And that's the thing, your college degree or your certificate or whatever scoping you did, it doesn't guarantee security, it guarantees options. If you get a medical degree, you now have the option to become a doctor. If you get a computer science degree, you now have the option to become a software developer. You aren't guaranteed a job just because you have a certain degree. Another thing is the company that you're working for right now may not even exist 10, 15 years from now. And again, coming back to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, they found that 50% of all startup companies, whoa, it's loud. And again, coming back to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, they found that 50% of all startup companies die within the first five years of starting up. And about 40% of all small businesses, so not just new ones, don't make it past 10 years. So if you're like the majority of us working for small to mid-sized companies, your so-called job security is just flipping a coin and hoping for the best. So now that we got that established, what should you do with this information? Should you sell all your possessions and go off and become a Buddhist monk in some mountain in Tibet somewhere? That would be awesome, but no, absolutely not. In my opinion, and this is just as a naive 24 year old, I think you should put yourself in a position where it becomes very hard to fire you. And you could do this in a myriad of different ways. You could learn a new skill or, or improve on an, uh, or improve on an existing one, or improve on an, uh, it's hard to say. Or improve on one that you already have. That way you can become a more valuable player in the workforce. You can also look into diversifying your income outside of your nine to five job. I personally like to put a portion of my income into assets like stocks or real estate that generate income. Then I'll only spend what I get from those investments. And that way you're not reliant on your job to keep you afloat. What I like about this is that I have greater control over where my money is coming from. And I'm not at the whims of the management of a single company. It also gives you the power to be like, fuck you to your asshole boss, which is so great. I've never actually done that online. If you're feeling super ambitious, you can even start a business. Now, this isn't for everyone, but if you put in the time, the discipline, and you're able to stomach not making money in the beginning, I think there's potential to have great financial sta financial stabil stability. Stability. I think there's potential to have great financial stability. I give up.
moving on. But of course, you have the potential to lose absolutely everything. But on the plus side, you have complete control over your future, or at least more control than the other options. So if you want to work two hours a day and shit on the floor, no one is stopping you. You're your own boss. But of course, again, there's a high chance that you'll fail. As I mentioned earlier, 50% of all businesses fail within the first five years. So yeah, that's something I've been thinking about lately. And if you're able to internalize this concept that you're never really safe no matter what you do, I think you'll be... God damn it. If you're able to internalize this concept that you're never really safe no matter what you do, I think you'll be way more prepared than life and you'll be way more successful because of it. Or you'll lose your entire life savings and become a homeless gang. Either way, winning. See ya. Peace.